lit. 22 degrees will be the daytime high, going down to an evening overnight low of 10. But we are expecting it to be dry for all those fans cheering on the Raptors. For Friday, to round out the work week, a similar day on tap, 21 degrees as well. And we say hello to June officially on Saturday with mostly sunny skies, fair conditions, and a high of 22 degrees. Jamie, it's back to you. Well, this just into CP24, a child has life-threatening injuries after being struck by a motorcycle. It happened at around 1.30 at Victoria Park in Adair, just north of St. Clair. Police say the four-year-old victim was taken to sick kids oh, with multiple oh, fractures. The motorcycle left the scene. CP24 has a crew heading to the scene, and we'll bring you the very latest information when we get it. It's 154, 22 degrees. This is Toronto's Breaking News, CP24. Team Canada is playing in the final of the World Hockey Championship this afternoon. We'll have a preview of a couple of us. Vacation home on a lake. My lake. Jane's lake. 
I think my work here is done. See, I can see it. With draws Tuesdays and Fridays, you can dream to the max. Looking to simplify your skincare routine without sacrificing results? Try Olay Total Effects for a simple one solution. Its unique formula is packed with vitamin B3, E, and C. In fact, a single pump contains more vitamin B3 than 50 cups of kale. Olay Total Effects gently renews skin cells and is proven to improve seven key areas of visibly healthy looking skin. Save time and money on your skin routine with Olay Total Effects. Brand Power, helping you buy better. I knew I put on a few extra pounds. It was hard for me to shed the weight until Jenny Craig. From a top diet nine years straight comes rapid results by Jenny Craig. Lose up to 16 pounds in your first four weeks. Get support from your you know, team weight loss expert and enjoy the chef crafted food. Sure. Call now and get five days of free food. The consultants are amazing. The food is delicious. Yeah. I mean, what do you really have to lose? For a limited time, lose 20 pounds for $20 and get five days of free food. Oh. We believe that so accident victims God. should have a voice. That accident yeah. victims should get the treatment they need. That the future can, can be brighter. Speak to one of our lawyers for free so and get your life there. back on track. Call today at 1-800-JUSTICE. The door opens this way. making win by the Raptors. We'll have more on the team capturing the Eastern Conference crowd and look ahead to the finals against the Golden State Warriors just ahead. We can't use this thing. One of the city's busiest roads is closed for maintenance today. We'll tell you what's going oh, oh. on the Don Valley Parkway and when it is expected to reopen. To the clock right now, 22 degrees, and from 299 Queen Street West, this is Toronto's breaking news. CP24. Right, um... I'm Kelly Bonahan. A child has life-threatening injuries after being struck by a motorcycle. Now, it happened at around 1.30 at Victoria oh, Park and Adair, just north of St. Clair. Police say the four-year-old victim was taken to sick kids with multiple fractures. The motorcycle left the scene. Joining us now on the phone with the very latest is Katrina Aragonte with the Toronto Police Service. Thank you for making time for us today. You're very welcome, Kelly. How are you? I'm doing well. Can you walk us through exactly what happened earlier this afternoon? Police received a call at approximately 1.30 this afternoon that a child pedestrian had been struck in the area of Victoria Park and Adair Road. The child is reported to be between the age of uh, three to five years old, who is a boy, and life-threatening conditions um, were found from when EMS and police arrived on scene. The child has since been transported to the hospital. Uh, it's believed to be life-threatening injuries that he sustained. The motorcycle was last seen going northbound on uh, Victoria Park, and we have some descriptions that uh, we'd like to release in hopes of getting the public's assistance in locating the uh, motorcyclist as well as the driver. Yeah, please go ahead with that description. We have a motorcycle that's described to be around uh, be about red, orange, or red and orange, a sparkly cruiser type Harley Davidson motorcycle. It's believed and uh, reported that the male, it's a male driver, uh, white, between the ages of 40 to 50 years old, uh, with a heavy set. Uh, it's also believed that there was a passenger um, on the motorcycle at the time from when the collision had occurred, a female passenger. So we're looking for any information from the public uh, that may have witnessed this incident to contact police immediately. Now, do you know where exactly the child was standing? Was he in a marked crosswalk on the side of the street? What are you hearing from witnesses? That still hasn't been uh, confirmed uh, at this point. We do have traffic services that are on scene to investigate further and try to piece together the way the collision had happened. Our efforts right now is to locate the motorcyclist and the driver and um, the health of the child at this point. We're told by paramedics multiple fractures. You say he has life-threatening injuries? That's right. From when we initially received the call, the child was reported to be going in and out of consciousness um, and with uh, severe injuries to the upper body as well as the head. And uh, EMS and police arrived on scene and initially an emergency run had uh, been conducted. Um, but since then, uh, we've transported the child to the hospital. Do you know if the child was with his parents, siblings? It's believed that the child was with, with uh, the family member, uh, the mother. So we're just, uh, we're, we're still on scene and we're, uh, we're hoping to get 
more information with regards to the motorcyclist and perhaps make his way to the station or contact police. In terms of Victoria Park and Adair Road intersection, is that entirely shut down right now? We do have closures in the area. Victoria Park is closed between St. Clair to Yardley. Okay, and any idea how long that will stay in place? I don't have an estimated time how long that will stay in place, but we are still investigating the location. Like I mentioned, traffic services are on scene right now to try and put together the event. So you got the collision analysis happening now, and also that search for this driver. Just to reiterate, you said a red, orange, sparkly cruiser-type Harley Davidson. You're looking for a male driver between the ages of 40 to 50 years old, heavy set, with a female passenger on the back. Is that right? That's correct, yes. Okay, so if anybody sees a description that sounds familiar, just ask to call you guys? Absolutely. You can contact us anonymously through Crime Stoppers, or you can contact Traffic Services at 416-808-1900. You can also contact the local division at 416-808-4100. Katrina Aragonte with the Toronto Police Service. We appreciate your time today. We'll keep our eyes on this story. Thank you. Thank you, Kelly. A serious crash on the 400 is causing delays for people heading back to the city from the cottage country. A motorcyclist had to be airlifted to hospital after colliding with a car in the southbound lanes past Innisfil Beach Road. All lanes were closed to accommodate Orange Air Ambulance, but they have since reopened. There are still lots of delays for drivers, though. Two people are hurt after a single vehicle crash in Mississauga. It happened at 3.30 this morning at Aaron Mills Parkway and South Millway. The vehicle left the road and slammed into a tree. The driver was taken to a trauma center with serious injuries and a female passenger was sent to local hospital with non-life-threatening injuries. Police are investigating whether alcohol was a factor in that crash. Time right now, 2.05, time for a check on weather and traffic. But let's start with weather with Kayla Williams giving us some more good news today. The sun is shining. We're in the 20s now, Kayla. Yeah, hanging out at 22. We're expected to peak at 24, Kelly. And right now, we're dealing with a nice balance of sunshine as well as cloud coverage. I'd still reach for those shades if you're going to be out and about enjoying the beautiful weather. And by the late afternoon hours, we're going to actually start to see the cloud coverage dissipate, really dealing with clear blue skies and plenty of sunshine. But for the most part, I think see across the board and around the horseshoe where it's dry. There's a little bit of active weather closer to the Detroit Western area. Here around the Golden Horseshoe, the clear, very uh, opposite of yesterday, really, considering we had about 28 millimeters of downpour rainfall yesterday when it was all said and done. Overall, here's a quick look at your current temperatures at the moment, slowly but steadily climbing. And our sunset tonight, just before 8.50 p.m., we go down to an overnight low of 12 degrees. And the good news is the sunshine, it's sticking around for the start of your work week. We're going to have a great start on Monday, but we are expecting showers. I'll let you know when, as well as what's the temperature going to be like and the weather forecast for Thursday. Big game ahead of us. Game one of the NBA Finals. Details coming up. That is still sinking in. Kayla, thank you so much. Time for a check on traffic right now. Things are getting busier on the 401. This look is at Yorkdale West towards Keele, so things picking up volume-wise, but everything moving along okay. Uh, it's not moving at all, though, on the DVP. That is closed today for some maintenance work to get it ready for summer. So if you need to take this route, just make sure you plan ahead. Nothing is going through the DVP from top to bottom until 5 a.m. tomorrow. And finally, a check on the garter. Let's see how things are faring there. Oh. We'll get back to you on that. Uh, back to the Raptors, though. Some more good news. The Toronto Raptors are heading to the NBA Finals for the first time in franchise history after a thrilling win last night. Lowry now drives and attacks. Finds Kawhi. The three. And it goes! Kawhi Leonard took charge to help secure the Game 6 win against the Milwaukee Bucks. He poured in 27 points and made 17 rebounds as the Raptors went on to win 100-94. Toronto takes the series four games to two. You know, I worked so hard to get to this point uh, with the season I had last year. Um, you know, just always betting on myself and, and knowing what I, um, you know, just knowing what I feel and, you know, what's right for me. And, you know, you know coming here with really great guys, great talent, and then I just, you know, Years, seven years here. Um, I've, I've ran to one guy for a while, and you know we were given an opportunity. He left. We beat a really good team in Milwaukee. Um, for me, you know, savor the moment, but um, I'm not satisfied. My goal is to win an NBA championship, uh, championship, and um, you know, 
but we still can't get him to plug in the way. Leonard, who has been the most dominant player in the postseason so far, was presented with the Eastern Conference Championship trophy last night. The Raptors have a few days off before they face the Golden State Warriors in the finals. Game one is set for Thursday in Toronto. Uh, talk about his even killedness and talk about him making huge plays. And tonight he seemed to inspire us with some monster rebounds, right? Just out of nowhere when we, you know, had a, you know, a bad position or even a position. And he made, I thought he made some winning rebounds, and that's, um, Sorry, that has a lot to do with it, too. Definitely. Fans got a little out of control by that square, jumping onto the roof of a police cruiser at one point. So far, no word from police on arrests or damage from the street celebration. And another group of fans climbed up onto the roof of a TTC bus outside Union Station. Not clear if anybody was charged in this, that case either. We're going down to TP24's Brandon Gomez. He is live from outside a much quieter Scotiabank Arena today, but still, every fan you talk to, just as excited as they were last night. Yeah, Kelly, it's a little bit quieter, but a steady stream of fans still excited and basking in that win from last night. The energy, you can still taste it. You can feel it on the streets of Toronto. Again, because this is the first time we can say that we are headed to the NBA Finals. I mean, even myself, as a childhood fan of this team, I can't even believe it. But it is such a pleasure, such an honor that I get to report on it. So let's talk about it, because this team is just not citywide. The fan base is international, including from the States. I want to bring in Brian, Mike, Steve. Brian and Steve, both from Detroit, Michigan, Detroit, Michigan and you're from Miami. Miami. Okay, what brought you guys out? Because you guys were at the game last night. Man, we lost our voices screaming so hard, but we just had to come out, um, support the team, support the city. Uh, we were all so excited, at, especially after winning game five. Everyone, uh, once they fell down 0-2, I think everyone said it's over. Stephen A. Smith, everyone was writing us off, but we came out. Uh, one, two straight, and then once we knew game five, I think everyone really started to believe, and lo and behold, got it done. So it was an unbelievable experience. Unbelievable. Have you guys ever experienced that type of energy? Because we know Raptors fans are one of the loudest, the rowdiest, and most proud in all of the NBA. Never. Um, never this to this extreme. This is just unreal how the fan base, everybody from Raptors Nation just came out and just totally went all out.